In Algebra 2, we oftentimes talk about functions. A function is a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So notice that that is italicized. That's a very important part of the definition, paired with exactly one element of the range. So each of the x values can only be paired with exactly one of the y values. So example number three is to identify the domain and the range of each relation, and then we're going to determine whether a relation is a function by following that rule that each x value can only be paired with one y value. So first starting with the domain. The domain will be all of the x values, so the domain is going to be the x values are 10, 6, 7, and negative 8. That's the domain. The range is, the def is all of the y values. So the y values are 3, negative 2, 4, and negative 9. And then we're asked to determine whether the relation is a function. So that means each x value can only be paired with exactly one of the y values. So the 10 is only paired with the 3. So when the x is 10, is any are there other y values paired with the 10 other than the 3? And when we look through the rest of the relation, we can see that there are no more 10s, which means none of them are paired with 3s. So, so far, we do have a function. Is the 6, when x is 6, that means the y value is negative 2. Can... A 6 be paired with anything else but a negative 2 in this relation. And when we look at the rest of the function, we don't see any more 6s in the x value. So no, that means that when x is 6, y is only going to be negative 2 in this particular relation. When x is 7, y is 4. Well, when x is 7, will y be anything but 4 in this particular relation? And it will not. And the same with negative 8, the last ordered pair. When a, 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 x is negative 8, y is negative 9. So yes, this is a function because it does follow that one-to-one -one relationship of x to y. Part B, same directions. Identify the domain and range. So the domain is all the x values, and the domain is 1, 2, 3. The range are the y values. And notice that in the first y box, there's actually two numbers. That's two numbers separated by a comma. That means that those are both y values in the range. So we have a 3 and a 4, and then a 7. And then notice that there is a another 4. Don't write the same number twice. Uh, that's actually considered to be incorrect if you would try to write the same number twice. So... Uh, the range is only going to be 3, 4, and 7. And then we got to figure out, is it a function or not? So when the x value is 1, there's actually two possible y values. There is a 3 and there's a 4. And that means when x is 1, there are two y values that are paired with it. And that goes against the definition of a function. So we can stop right there because we can say that no, it is not a function because the x value has been paired with two different y values. Part C is a mapping. Again, we identify the domain, the all of the x values, and the domain is negative 3, 0, 1, 5. The range is all of the y values, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and positive 2, and negative 2 and positive 2 are different numbers, so I do write those separately, and then determine if it's a function. So is this a function? So when, when x is negative 3, the only possible number that y could be paired with that is negative 4. But look at the next number. When x is 0, it's telling me that y is either negative 2, or it could be a zero in the range. It could be two different y values paired with that x value. So that goes against the definition of a function. So though, no, this is not a function. Now I will take this time to tell you that 
it is okay for a y value to be paired with two different x values. It is okay for that. Now, let's say, for example, that we were to modify this problem a little bit different, a little bit. Let's say, for example, that this arrow connecting the 0 to the negative 2 was not there. So let's say that means the negative 2 wouldn't be there at all. So let's say that that connection was not there. So block that from your mind. And now would this be a function? So the negative 3 is attached to only negative 4. This 0 in the domain is attached to only the 0 in the range. The 1 is only attached to the 2. But then we look at this arrow right here. We have a 5 that is also attached to the 0 in the range right there. Would that be a function? And yes, it would. Because remember, the definition of a function is that each element of the domain is paired with only one element of the range. It says nothing about the range being paired with more than one element of the domain. So in this case, if you have two arrows connected to a y value, it is okay for that to happen and it can still be a function assuming that there is not two arrows connected to the same x value. And then finally, part D, we have trying to figure out if it's a function in a, a coordinate plane. So let's just go through and start off by writing out the coordinates. And this coordinate is 4 to the right and 2 up, so that's 4, 2, positive 4, positive 2. This coordinate is 1 to the right and 0 up, so that's 1, 0. This coordinate is 0 left or right and 3 down, so 0, negative 3. And this coordinate is located at 1 to the left and 1 down, so 1 to the left is negative 1 and 1 down is negative 1. So notice that each x value is paired with exactly one y value. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 1, and it can't be anything else. When x is 0, the y value is only negative 3. When x is 1, the y value is only 0. And when x is 4, the y value is 2. So that means that this is a, this is a function. We can go ahead and identify the domain and the range. So I'll do that. So the domain is all the x values. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 4. The range is the unique y values. And that would be 2. And we have a y value of 0, and a, one, a negative 1, and a negative 3. And again, it is a function. A quick way to figure out whether a graph is a function is to do what's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test, if a vertical line can touch two points at the same time, then it is not a function. If it, you can take a vertical line and touch two points in the exact same time, then we can say that this is not a function. So let me just show you how that works. So over here, I have a line, make it vertical again, so let's slide this across, you can use like a pencil or a ruler, and when we slide it across, do we touch two points at the same time? So we're okay back here, we're okay right here, we don't touch more than one point, we don't touch more than one point here or here. So since we can't touch more than one point at the same time, we can say that this is, a, this is a function. Now, let's go ahead and add a fifth point in there. So let's say that there was a point right here. So if I did the vertical line test, what would happen now? So if I did the vertical line test here, I could touch two points at the same time. So since I'm touching two points at the same time, that means this would not be a function. And the reason this works is what is the ordered pair of the, that new point that I just put? So that ordered pair would be one to the right and two up. 
So I could write that in as one, two. And since it is one to the right and two up with the ordered pair one, two, that means that I have two points with an X value of one, but with different Y values. Notice they would have different Y values, the Y values of two and zero. And since you have the same X value with two different Y values, that means it cannot be a function.